There's a really nice large crane flying by. Uh, this is everybody's in for the holidays, so we got some visitation here. Okay. <clears throat> What we're going to be talking about today, this is for all you folks, and I think there's about, looks like, you know, statistically, that there might be somewhere on the range of about uh, 10 out there across the board, uh, some people in the Caribbean. Uh, thank you for watching. I don't know what you're doing with it, but I hope you're doing something positive. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is for those folks who now have this material, and uh, the material, of course, is the fundamentals of... Uh, uh, unitary theory, grand unitary theory, that we're going to unite uh, electromagnetism with gravity, okay? So as we do that, ele uh, connecting electromagnetism with gravity, of course, uh, <clears throat> for you folks who, who, are, who are just now getting into this, and you're probably pretty young, you may even be writing a research paper on it, and you're less worried about uh, unified field theory and, and how atoms are spinning than you are <laughs> writing a scientific paper using the internet. Okay, well, where are you going to go with this thing? And how is this going to build? Well, and, and how are we going to proof it? How are you, you going to proof it? How are you going to validate it? Or how are you going to quantitate it and, 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 and make a decision based on what, what this information we're talking about. And uh, the information looks good. So does a lot of information looks good. A lot of things we see and we think about look good, but they don't stand up to the test of time. So, so you know, being of a scientific ilk, you're going to try and put this through some kind of filter that that gives you a better, better feeling for a better look, a, a more substantial information, a, a better footing. Okay. So we're going to use spin theory, and out of spin theory, we're going to say precession is a pretty important part of the way atoms, molecules, the universe, the solar system, us, everything works. We're going to say precession is a major event in an understanding motion. Now, one of the things I want to uh, touch with you is that uh, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> Why are we in the dither we're in right now? Why can't we seem to figure out motion? And, and why can't we do some just simple uh, calculations to find out why the moon goes around the earth? Or why the earth goes around the sun? Or how atoms work? We got, we got into a problem somewhere along the line in physics when physics joined with math and everybody thought math was going to, you know, cure the common cold. Well, we need to understand where that's going to take us and where it all started. From a historical vantage, of course, it all went wrong somewhere along the time of Newton. You know, Newton was a great mathematician, and he and that uh, German fella gave us calculus, and uh, bless them, because they really gave us something to work with. But calculus is tied to the effect of what we view as gravity. So everything that, that's going to be in motion, we're going to tie to the Earth's gravity, okay? And, I mean, you'll see that in the far, formula, you know, uh, uh, and we'll go over that, too, and that'll be interesting. But it all went wrong with, with Newton. And the reason it went wrong with Newton is Newton only really gave us uh, two laws of motion, and then he jumped into math. And uh, those two laws of motion, of course, aren't quite correct. They're probably, they're fundamentally uh, uh, s substantial. I mean, we can understand those two laws. But then jumping into the idea that mathematizing it right away was probably wrong. Uh, and we'll get into that. But, but math itself right away from Newton on, you know, uh, did not get us where we want to go. And where am I going with this? <laughs> okay. How are we going to prove it? How are we going to say we're right, Newton's wrong, we're right, and, and quantum theory is wrong, we're right, and uh, uh, you shouldn't take the signpost that says uh, go with the math, uh, go to the left, go up that, that street there, and you're going to find nirvana by following these street signs when there's a street sign that says procession. Why go to the right when all these other street signs are saying to the left? Well, let's, let's, let's take this in consideration. You know fingerprints? You've heard about fingerprints. You probably believe, uh, like on TV and, and murder mysteries, that they can just about tie 
a criminal to the scene if he got his uh, if he got his fingerprints. And now, of course, DNA. DNA is pretty good too. But in fingerprints, the whole fundamental idea of fingerprints is that no two people in the universe have the same set of fingerprints. And you know, from knowledge at hand, when you fingerprint people and kind of study it and all that, you really don't in your community find two people that have the same palm print or the same fingerprints or the same retina. However, the statement that no two people in the world have the same fingerprint would, of course, under scientific scrutiny and a, a procedure that could prove that, has never stood up because we don't have a proof for it. We don't even try it. <laughs> haven't even tried it. It's too difficult. Um, we haven't been able to do that. We haven't been able to substantiate that there are no two people in the world that don't have the same fingerprints because we can't study everybody. In them. Even with computers, we ran into problems. So, so today, the, today, and I think it was 1999, Supreme Court held that because you can't prove it, therefore, it's not a, it cannot be admissible scientific evidence or be put in that framework. You have to give everybody else putting in their two cents to defeat that. It's, it's, you can't let a jury decide a person's fate because of fingerprints, because it's not scientific. It's anecdotal, we would call it. Nothing wrong with anecdotal. It's what gets us started on the right, right path to understanding. And it's the fundamentals of science, anecdotal, what we see before us. But we have to always be careful, of course, and we always have to study what we see before us. Okay. Now, in fingerprints, which seems pretty basic, we seem to have a, a very difficult time substantiating the very fact that fingerprints are a, a good scientific way of tying someone to a site and everything like that. And, and we could go with that assumption, and it's probably a correct assumption. Very, very correct. However, we haven't developed a scientific proof for it. Okay. And quite frankly, that's the problem we're in right now. Let me check my uh, computer here. Yeah, we're still rolling. And quite frankly, that's the problem we have today is that we cannot prove most of this stuff. So we are going to be on antidotal evidence. And if we're on antidotal evidence, then everything should be even. Everything should be square. Everything should be equal in our consideration. So the mere <clears throat> inability to prove one wrong does not necessarily make it right, it just makes it even with every other approach. Whether you're talking about Darwinism, uh, selection of the species or something, or the way atoms spin, or the way fingerprints work, you must reconsider, if you are a person who is trying to get to the truth, that what you have before you, you <clears throat> is no more, is no better or no worse than other evidence presented. So for those people who want to right away say that uh, because there's such a voluminous amount of studies going on, on quantum theory, on who knows, <laughs> Einstein's theory of relativity, and all of this stuff, that that would disclude or, or weigh heavier than spin and the idea that precession, which is a fundamental observed event, and we can't get around it, <clears throat> uh, that the, all of this other stuff, because of all these sheep skins and people working diligently in our belief in math since Newton, is any better than any of these other ideas that people are coming forward with. Spin theory and, and precession cannot be disproved. Oh, I, I'm sure in the f in near future we're going to get some good work on it, but you can't get around it. And if you can't get around it, it should be part and parcel of what we're studying today, just like creationism and uh, 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 natural selection. Uh, natural selection has some flaws and some pretty basic ones. And I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to Darwinian approach. He's pretty smart. He really got in there. But these people who are pushing the hand of God, they have a point too. And we should look at it. And if we're scientific, we must. We can't be afraid where it's going to take us. If you were afraid of where somewhere something is going to take you, then you're not part of the solution. You're not going to get to where you want to go. You have, must drop that fear. Good luck. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas. <laughs>